Hey guys, welcome back to the Steel Forum. Today we're talking a little bit about COVID, how it's impacted detailers. Hope you're working remote. If you're not, why not? And what else is going on with the detailing community? We talk about how to deal with a, a customer who is a little bit nitpicky. They want a hundred pages of different standards that you could never possibly comply with without being their employee. Talk about how to deal with them, how to work a little bit of empathy into them. And exciting announcement about our Discord server that's coming up today. The Steel Forum. All right, Matt. So we're still kind of in this COVID thing, whatever this this has become. Uh, I, I hate to use the phrase "new normal" because I don't think it's going to last forever. But there are right. some changes here that seem to be permanent, or seem that they're going to be kind of life altering, particularly in the employment market. We were kind of right. ahead of this curve as far as the remote work goes and how amazing mm -hmm. it is, and this should be the way that everybody lives. But it, it really seems like other phases, other industries are really struggling to catch up. You think detailers outside of us are were already on top of this, or you think it just we just got lucky? I think I think we got lucky in that the way that we've set our system up just kind of worked well for this whole situation. But it was never our plan. Uh, what we have seen is a lot of shops that have some sort of a brick and mortar office and whatnot. There have been some closures. There have been people that have just wrapped up and gone away. Um, but anyone that has really adopted the work from home, work remotely sort of a mentality has done fairly well for themselves. Well, and it's it, to, to me, I, I kind of like to see some of those fabricators going under and it, it sounds terrible, I understand, right? But usually those ones who are who are struggling to hold on, that comes at a cost, right? And it's usually to guys like us, either in-house working as detailers or subcontract detailers, either way, people want to stomp on them because I don't know what it is about detailers, but it looks like we have a sign on our back that says, kick me. Right, right. I don't, I don't understand why, but we are permanent pariahs in the construction industry. We're absolutely hated by so many people. Just as a, as a, a necessary evil is is basically how we're considered. Like we're these in the way people that get between engineers and their bad designs, and erectors and fabricators and their bad ideas of putting everything up in a in a silly way, and we're the ones that have to stop and ask questions. But if we don't, we're also the ones that lose all of our money. You know, when the fabricator or or an engineer or architect puts out bad work, okay, we're just going to issue an ASI and move along and, and hope that nobody charges us for it. You know, how many times have you seen impossible section sizes thrown into plans or physics being completely ignored by people whose jobs are to entirely embrace the concept of physics? Yeah, you know. it's, uh, I mean, it, it literally is every project. We don't see projects anymore that have completed construction doc documents. But there have been changes now it, to the mentality of not just detailers, but the, it, it seems like the American worker in general, where there's some stuff they're just not putting up with anymore. And this, you know, they call it the great resignation or whatever else. It, it has to impact the detailing industry and I think, again, to the good of detailers, where now we're comfortable saying, you know what, I'm not going to relocate to the middle of nowhere to work for the fabricator. I expect to be able to allow remote work. We've proven that remote work is viable. It's productive, right? People, and we, we had told people this for years, that, listen, remote work is as productive as sitting in an office, if not more. Mm -hmm. for the overwhelming exactly. amount of people. Yeah. For some people, when you put them at home in their own office, they're not going to do any work, but those people weren't doing the work in the office either. Right. 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 
right? For some people, this work just isn't for them. It doesn't make them bad people, right? It just makes them bad detailers. Exactly. Yeah, and it's been such a strange thing, but like we, we've got a recent hire and he was just thrilled to be able to not only be the thought of working from home, but he even asked us like, okay, I, I just got settled into my new apartment, but he states away. He, he's, you know, other side of the country, basically. And he's like, so I don't have to relocate. I don't have to come move up where you guys are. No, it's, it's fine. All you need is an internet connection and you're good to go. You know, we'll send you the equipment, the hardware, but that's all it takes. It, it, you don't have to, you know, drive out to and commute to some brick and mortar office building so we can all share a, a network connection, which is all it is. You know, there's no need for detailers to sit shoulder to shoulder. You're not drawing on the same sepia. That's ridiculous. Everyone's in their own workspace. So why can't we connect those workspaces with a different network connection, an internet cable, as opposed to a LAN cable? It, it's, there's no reason not to do that. And it, it allows you to build your company and scale your company in ways that were never imaginable before. I mean, you have to live in a city with 50 detailers in that city or get them to move to your city in order to hire 50 detailers. Now you can just hire people all around the, the country, around the world, whatever you want to do. It, it's, it's just, a, it's just such, it's freaking no brainer, man. I can't believe that everybody hasn't jumped on this yet, but more and more people are. So I think the shift is happening and it's just going to keep going in that direction. Yeah. And I, I do, I worry about some of the, the detailing houses right? Where they've had an office, they, they built servers, they built computers and they're paying rent. I don't know, continuing through not only, the, yeah, they're going to be less competitive because they've got that little bit of overhead, but it's not that significant. The real thing is right. they're going to have trouble hiring the best people. The best people are going to be saying, Hey, I lived this remote life where I can work from home, right? I can, get my kids off the bus. I could pet my dog. I could have a decent lunch in a comfortable space and avoid that commute. There are right. myriad benefits to working at home and very, very few to working in an office that, that you can't reproduce even better in an online scenario. You know, we, every morning we have a morning meeting and our guys all get together and we, you know, we shoot the shit and we chat and we laugh about stuff together. And we, we have that kind of team experience but when i find y'all annoying i just leave right i just turn you off i don't have to sit there and and be frustrated with the noise or you know this guy's got a hacking cough and i gotta listen to that all day or whatever else i can right. just and usually it's me with the hacking cough that's just historically always been the issue but a mute button when you know you've got a hacking cough and now nobody has to listen to you ever again that's a great feeling yeah all that stuff i i so I, I, I can't see detailing going back, right? Uh, yeah, some detailers right. are going to have to go back, but it's usually isolated ones who, and this is a big thing I think for a lot of detailers, is they just don't realize how employable they are. So they're working in a company and they feel like that's the only company that they could work for, right? Right it's the first time that a headhunter gets their information and they're like, look, there's, here's this big list of people who would love to hire you. Yep. And, and that's there, which actually brings yeah. me to another thing that I wanted to talk about um, something you've been working on, which is a way for detailers to kind of communicate with each other. Um, you want to talk about it a little bit? Sure. So, over the past several months, I have gotten into doing a lot of streaming. Uh, I do some gaming and streaming and whatnot on Twitch. And to accompany that, I had a YouTube channel, but I also began building a Discord server. Right. And it kind of gives me a place where people that watch my streams, they're able to congregate and they can talk off, off air, as it were, you know, it, before streams, after streams, whenever. But we can have that conversation about just not even the games, just whatever's going on in our lives, just have a nice place to chat. And we've moved in and developed the same concept based on the Steel Forum, our, um, our YouTube channel, which you're obviously watching if you're sitting here watching this video. But 
uh, it, it's going to be a place where it's not just having a comment on the video that you're watching at the time, but it's where you can go and have conversations because we what we are really lacking, I feel anyway, and, and you, I think you agree with me, Nick, is yeah. we're really lacking a vibrant community. We need to be able to build a place where everyone can get together, share links, have conversations about software issues you're having what's going on in the detailing world what's you know it, maybe looking for uh advice trying to find other professionals to contact be it project managers detailers architects engineers lawyers whatever it is um uh, just anywhere to have that big conversation because what we have found is we have certain places we can go to talk but they're very narrow in scope you know you can get on a software forum and then you're talking about that software well, you've got bigger questions than that. It's not just how do I get this member to be entered into my model in a specific way. It may be, hey, I've got a general question on detailing. Is it a good idea to frame these two beams together when I've got this other situation going on around it? Talking to somebody you know, about load pathing or whatever the case may be, uh, I think that building a place for people to go especially detailers, but really anyone in the construction industry would be welcome. And that's going to be something that we want to move forward with. And I've got that finally we've put the finishing touches on it. And I think we're just about ready to cut that loose for public. Yeah, I'm going to put the pressure on you of that by the time I'm ed ed done editing this video, mm -hmm. you have something ready to go so that we could put it on the YouTube, put it on this channel and say, okay, come and join us. You even if you don't say anything, right? If you just sit around, but there's stuff. And I remember you were kind of on the, the tail end of this, but when I was coming up as a detailer in the early 2000s, okay, or the early 21st century, as some people have taken to calling it, uh, there was just an email list called Steel Link, right? And it, it still exists kind of in some that's, form. But that's the Yahoo group, right? Yeah, the Yahoo group. Okay, okay, yep, yep, and, I remember. And there was, every day, we'd get five or six emails, people sh talking back and forth about really kind of the, the nitty-gritty stuff about, hey, you know, we use TC bolts because they're convenient for us, but they're in snug tight con connections. Is it okay for us to type, to snap those, or is that detrimental, right? Is it going to cause banging bolt syndrome? Or, hey, you know, we've got a, uh, a, an engineer who says that we have to prime these beams in the field or that the paint in the field isn't passing inspection or the camber in the field isn't passing inspection. And there's all these like code of standard practice thing that if, if you don't know that you're missing it, you might not hear about, but being present in those conversations, just kind of reading along can bring you into right. something. And then every once in a while you do, you know, something you're like, Oh, actually I came across this exact situation and here's this, you know, here's this handrail bracket that, that does this special thing that you need. Here's this different brand of breakaway clips for fire that you can also galvanize or stuff like that, where there's, you know, that knowledge base becomes very, very valuable to us as detailers, but also to our, our customers and to our employers. But you've got to be able to talk to people who know what you're talking about, even if it's not about specifics about detailing, right? Just being able to, to say the word bollard and have people not look at you funny is great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. It, I mean, that was, that was an email board, right? That was all conducted through email through Yahoo groups and it just, stopped being they moved right. on to some other form but they didn't continue to try to grow and add more people so as people retire they just it runs out of steam by attrition basically right and that's one of the things like the sds2 forum really really suffers from is the non-instantaneous communication i need a solution to this weird problem Right. I've got this customer who wants no paint notes scribed on the underside of flanges for some reason. And to have other people who have also dealt with ridiculous customers and they're instantaneously there, right? They see the message pop up and they say, oh, actually, yeah, I've got a, a solution for that. People love to have a solution. They love to help, but you got to right. give them a venue to do it. Right. And when you're talking about the SDS forum, that's that's the old school classic bulletin board type forum. 
you're going to have to hit refresh every single time to see what's new there. But Discord is more of a chat and streaming service. So that pops up in real time and you see that message happening. So it, it's, it's a small lightweight program. You can throw that sucker up and just leave it running on your, on your screen somewhere. You'll get notifications from windows when new messages come in. If you, if you set that up, you, you can do that. It's up to you. And also there's voice chat. So you can immediately hop into a lobby with somebody and just talk to them and it's, it's instant. I mean, you're, you're good to go and you're just talking, you can share screens, you can stream your screen to them and they can talk you through something. So it, it adds so many more layers than just an old email or bulletin board type forum. It's, it's definitely the, the, the latest and greatest in technology and it allows you to connect so much better than you ever could before. Right. And I can see right from the offset that it's going to require administration and uh, what's the word for the moderation moderation, right? Sure. Because especially, and I don't mean to pick on them, but I'm gonna, the, the offshore firms, you give them any venue, any hint that you might possibly be considering thinking about subcontracting detailing at some point and that you'll just get bombarded, just smacked constantly with sales. And we will not have any of that. It's just, nope, this is not that venue. Yeah, it's right? not for self-promotion. Nope, where unsolicited requests for that kind of thing will be absolutely off limits, killed with fire, right? Like it's a banning <laughs> offense. Right. Right, we'll probably put together a channel that's specific to say if you want subcontracting detailing proposals post them specifically in here and then you know and then everyone can, can put that on ignore right right <laughs> but a, a, everything else no i don't that's not what we're here we're here to help each other not sell to each other now right. helping each other a lot of times ends up in a relationship where that person comes to you and says hey i've got a job to detail Right. I'm looking for, for help. Can you help? That's great. That's building a relationship. Yeah. If you want to, if you want to use it as a place to kind of get your, your name out there, then be helpful, provide answers and yeah. people will just come to you. I mean, how many times have we gotten a job or, or somebody come to us for some, some piece of work or whatever, because we've posted answers in different forums. We talk to people. We're just generally helpful. So people come to us. I don't go out there and post constantly. Hey, United Structural is looking for work. If you want a subcontract, no, I don't need to bother with that. Work comes right. to us by and large. So, you know, just be a helpful person, put that energy out into the world and it comes back to you. And that's really the best way to sell and to promote yourself is to just be a helpful person. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think it's going to be great. I think it, setting up the channels, it's, it's going to be kind of a give and take. We're going to have to figure it out. Um, but we're going to try and separate. Here's some, some work stuff specifically. Here's some, I want to hang out with detailers and just shoot the shit kind of stuff. Um, kind of run the gamut, but I would also love to see detailer streaming channels, right? Like even if, if, if your if your channel has nothing to do with detailing, right? I, I still, you're a detailer and we've got stuff in common. I might want to watch your Twitch stream. You know, you right. know what I mean? It, it's, it's a, it's a good venue for us to, to talk to each other and, and just yeah. be. Well, cause detailers, especially in the modern age now, so many detailers have just lived their entire careers on gaming computers yeah. that gaming just comes naturally. You're running a sick, four to four hundred to thousand dollar gaming card and you've got 64 gigs of ram on a monster processor because you could you built that machine because ego it wasn't even because you needed it yep. so many detailers if they've got the ability they'll build that machine i've got a beast sitting here just because oh yeah of that. we just built and another one too it was completely we hired a new guy right and right we do all of our work is remote we, we use our, our cloud system. It's everything is done up there. All the graphics, all that, no reason for it almost. Right. But we yeah. still, we want you to have good stuff and know it's good stuff sitting next to you. So here you go. Here's, here's a gaming rig. Go, go to it. Yep. And if, if the day happens and something goes wrong that you can't make your remote connection, but you, you've got your files, you know, they, they, they exist locally. You, you know, because we've got sync services. So yeah, the, 
The internet may be down, but you can join in Zoom via phone call. Get your marching orders for the day. You already had the model file available to you because it was in your sync service. Okay, well, you can go ahead and run locally if you have to. You're going to be on your own. You can't partner up with anybody, but you can absolutely run locally. And with a couple of 4K monitors and a beast gaming machine, you could do that while watching YouTube all day. I mean, it's not, it's, well, you won't have internet, but you're watching movies, whatever you've got, it, it's not any kind of an issue. But that chatting with buddies things is actually, it's, it's really kind of important. Like this morning I, we, we were in our meeting and uh, one of our guys, Jason, he's going to be working on the same project for a week, right? At least a week out, he's, he's going to be on this project. And I thought to myself, you know, I should just tell him, you don't have to come to the morning meetings we know what you're doing, right? We don't need to give you direction. We don't need to know what you're working on. You've got it. But I want to hear from them. I want to hear how this is, uh, uh, there's their body language stuff that you can pick up on too, which is one of the reasons that I say, you know, you're, when we're on camera, I need you to be on camera so that I can see how you're doing, right? Like every once in a while, a guy's having a, a, a crappy time. And, you know, you're not going to pick it up through what they say, but when you, you look at it, you just, hey, you look a little right. run down. You look a little everything okay, and maybe everything's fine, right? But I, yeah, when, I, when I you can help. spot the frustration on their face, but they're being silent, you weren't going to hear that, but you can see it, you know, right. and that allows you to because that's just part of the whole human experience is interacting with not just your voice, but also body language, eye contact. Are they actually looking at something? I mean, if somebody's talking to you and you just see that they're looking down like this and you yep. know, they're, they're, it, it sends a whole different message than, oh yeah, I'm, I'm working on everything. It's going all right. You know, or as uh, I'm, I'm working on everything, it's, it's going all right. So you know, this it, actually, it's, a it's another thing. good transition because we were, we were at our meeting this morning and I've, I'd seen a little bit of email going back and forth between one of our guys and one of our customers. And I could, I could feel his kind of frustration growing with it. And so I, I went in and I, I paid a little bit more attention to the thread. And I wanted to talk to you about it kind of on camera to kind of share our thoughts about dealing with this kind of customer because it's a different kind of problem, right? It's, it's it, it, so what it is, this customer has put together a whole bunch of standards and I call them standards, but really that's a quotation mark. It's really micromanagement that they're putting together in and calling it a standards form, right? Standards include here, here are my standard piece marks. Here's how we like to, to you know, we like shear tabs instead of uh, clip angles. We're a welded shop. We measure things from the bottom of the base plate instead of the top of the base plate, stuff like that, right? Right. But this stuff is is crossing the line from they have detailing standards into they're telling us how to run our business, right? They're telling our guys how they have to do every step along the way, right? All the way up to, okay, this is how you have to name your project files. This is the, when, when you submit stuff to us, it needs to be in this folder and then this subfolder and then this subfolder and then this subfolder. And it's, it's literally to the point where just putting together the documents after the job is complete takes an hour right of of organizing them according to this list of instructions for what which, should be hitting export right right which crosses the line f for me from okay this is you know we want to give you stuff the way you want to see it into okay this is too much Right. But yeah. what, I, 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 what is that line? Do you think like how far is too far before it's like, okay, we're not, we're not your employees. We're a subcontractor. We have 15 customers that we need to be able to do this for. We can make some modifications for you, but it's, it's different. What, what is it? Right. Well, I mean, think about it from the standpoint of like, okay, I want to, I want to have an addition built on my house. So I hire a contractor to come out and do that. Now I'm going to tell him what materials I want it made out of, what color to paint it, 
and any codes that he needs to comply with, he's going to need to figure that out and comply with those codes, fire codes, building codes, whatever it is. Yep. Right. But it's, it's on him to decide how to get there. Now, if I start going out there and telling him, Oh, I'd use a number three Phillips screwdriver for that. You know what? You should choke up on that hammer a little bit more and maybe angle the end and nail up another 10 degrees because I like to see my nails driven in like this. Then I can do it myself and not hire him. And that's what it needs to be is if you want that degree of micromanagement control, hire an in-house staff and stop subcontracting. When you subcontract, you are giving a certain amount of control over to the person that you've hired to do that job. And you have to let them do it because if you're going to have that degree of control, then you just need to hire that in-house staff. And then you can dictate, this is how I want everything done on every single job. And I'm going to nitpick it, nitpick it, nitpick it. Because when you nitpick them, they're going to have to go back and do it again and again and again until you like it. Well, they're on the clock the whole time. They're getting paid. The longer you make it take, the more they make. I get paid to draw things once. And so if you start changing your mind and nitpicking things to death, and then you get upset when I send you a bill for triple what the job price was as a change order, well, you made me redraw it three more times. Yeah. If I was your in-house staff, you would have paid me for that. And there wouldn't have been any argument, but because we have an agreed upon price, you don't like it when I try to charge you for all the extra time. Well, I only got it once. It's like, well, because you made me keep redoing it, but I still did that work over and over and over again. Well, and you I can't think, have that degree of control unless it's your in-house people. I think one of the big differentiations for me is that when it, it, you have to be, it has to be small enough information that I can keep it in my head reasonably, right? I need to be able to memorize this information and no, okay, I can proceed with this. As a checker, right, if I need to keep referring back to your standards to see if we've met them, I'm sorry, I can't keep up with it. Right. There's, it's, it's just unreasonable. It's too much when it's like that. Your standard needs to be something that fits well within the realm of stuff that everybody is doing mm -hmm. with minor modifications to picking a system within that group. Right. If right. And we had a customer, uh, it was 2014, 20, I think it was, I think it was 2014, late 2013, 2014, long time ago, we first got started as a company and it was, we'll take what we can get for work. You know, we weren't picky. Sure. If anyone wanted us to draw it, we were going to draw. It. They handed us an 83 page detailing manual and expected us on the first job to make no mistakes outside of what that book told us. We had to do everything, follow every single rule. And we got an email. This guy is furious and ready to pull the job from us because on page 76, paragraph four, line three, I told you that the note for this galvanizing thing has to be listed like this. And you guys listed it like that. Yeah. And oh, it's like, who I, cares? Right. Come on. I, I can't remember that. I don't... I, I don't have years and years to spend with you to learn by mistakes, all of those things, right? If you're, if over time we can start to, to learn some of that stuff, all right, we'll, we'll get it right. It's, as long as you're cool with it along the way that, right. Hey, fix it. But also if you're cool with it along the way, maybe you just don't need that. Right. Right. Like, and that's, that's what it always seems to come down to. It's always these standards that they're, they're trying to have everything be exactly the same, but not for a real reason. Right. right. Like <clears throat> we, we've seen that over and over where you'll have a shop and they had one detailer, they had one in-house detailer and now they've grown and one in-house detailer isn't going to cut it. And so normal people, and at the risk of insulting anyone that doesn't follow this, but I'm sorry, normal people will codify what is important to them and let the other people just do what they do. So if you're going to hire more detailers in house, these are the things that are important after that, just draw it. I don't care. Or if you're going to hire outsides, if you're going to hire, you know, subcontractors, again, these are the things that are most important to me. Make this happen. Everything else, 
I'll accept what you give me as long as it meets code and contract drawing requirements. That that just needs to be it. Yeah. If it fits, it ships. That's just the way of it. But when when you get that shop where it was just one detailer and they're like, okay, I need you to write me the manual. What would you do? And this guy writes a script like he's a 911 operator and it is just a bajillion if this, then that's. Right. That's like... I you can't, you can't do it. that. You just can't do that. If if your detailing manual that you give subcontract detailers is any longer than like 10 pages, it's right. too long. Yeah. It's it's too much. And and that includes you know sketches of your standard clipping. Like you should have yeah, maybe you've got 20, maybe 30 standard parts, right? That are kind of named systemically or systematically. And then a couple of notes like, you know, we, you don't have to show the vent holes or you do have to show all the vent holes and here's how we do our piece marking. And this is what our, our sheets are named. That's, that should really be the end of your detailing manual. Right. You know, I, right. And we supply any new customer that we get, we issue them a questionnaire and it's, it's 10 to 13 pages long, which yep. because it's, got big bulky questions and pictures and like okay how do you want this dimension how do you want this shown and it's really just kind of creating for us the sds fabricator file like what do i got to do to fill this out to make sure it dumps out what'll make you happy right anything that's beyond that if it's a very job specific thing like all right we're going to build this canopy as a frame i want to weld this i know i don't usually have that conversation with us of course but in general anything beyond that questionnaire that's my problem Leave me alone about it. We'll solve that problem. Yep. If it's a real problem, then I'll come to you and ask your opinion. But other than that, whatever I give you, you're going to have to accept. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's not that we don't want the, the customer to end up with something that they're they're happy with and that lets them get through the shop. But we're, we're not the only subcontract detailer you're using. And right. you're not our only customer. So we can't memorize your list of 300 requirements and be able to reliably check to make sure all of those got incorporated. Right. We just can't. It's just, that, that's, that's not within the human realm of, of possibility. Exactly. And the, the price per hour will go through the roof because you're not going to trust me when I say this job that should take 20 hours to draw will now take 700 hours to check because I'm going to have this guy pour through your 300 page manual over and over and over right. again. And line by line, make sure should. that everything you've said has been done. Right. I, I can't do it. If you want to keep your costs down, you're just going to have to bite the bullet and accept that you've got drawings that will work. Just use them. Right. There's no reason for this over the top, you know, requiring requirements for everything. It's also bad for your business. As, right. as the fabricator, right? Like, because you know that they're doing that all the way through, right? Standards oh, are yeah. absolutely important, but this is micromanaging. Absolutely. Right, right. You you have to find the line between a, a basic set of standards and micromanagement and then never cross that line. Yep. You, you, you can't go that far. But it's it's tough. The conversation with them is one of the things I wanted to, to touch base on because you can't come out and say, I'm not following your standards. They're stupid. <laughs> right. Right. You can't right. do That's that. That's the other problem. Right. You, you, you have to find some. So, and, and you've, you've read a book on this. You suggested it. to me, it's the, what was it? Ne negotiate. Never split the difference. Never split the difference. Um, yep. Which is a good book on negotiation. One of the things it, it tells you is try to put the other person in your shoes let right. them see the situation from your shoes here's the thing i have 10 detailers i need for any one of those detailers at any time to be able to jump onto your job and i need to know that they're going to be able to do it to your standards if right. your manual is too long and there are too many requirements in there i can't do that so it means that if you're, if the couple of guys that work on your projects most of the time are on vacation or die, then you're just not getting your work. You just have to wait until we can get somebody up to speed in that. 
right? right. And uh, trying to put them into that position is kind of what I, what I focus on, right? Here's the problem with it. Here's why I can't do what you want us to do. And it's not a cost perspective. It's, it's impossible to be, do those things in the amount of time that you've asked for. Can't do it. I just can't. Right. Um, right. And we've had jobs where we've, we've allowed our customer to micromanage it to death. It's cost us thousands of dollars. You know, our budget on the job to get it done, the break even point occurred weeks ago and you're still micromanaging us. We got the job ready to go out for approval on time or with time to spare. And now it's weeks later and we've had a guy working 40, well, 32 hours a week for us, but working full-time weeks and it's still not to your liking because every time we send it in, you find something else that you don't like about it. Yeah. And, and, and they're just redrawing it in red. But they're not fundamentally changing any of the engineering on it. They're not fundamentally changing what the output of the, the final product is. The building is going to look correct. Correct. Everything is going to be the right length. The connections yeah. are all going to fit. Yeah. It's just, well, I want it presented in this special way. Learn to read. I mean, that's that's seriously akin to saying, I can't read Times New Roman. I can only read Arial font. Well, and it does. It, it gets into <laughs> some of that stuff where like, yeah, you know, this one, this one company that we're talking about is literally, well, we don't want you to name the job that way in your SDS file. We want you to name it our way. Well, I'm sorry. I've got, you know, 20 customers. I need to be able to organize stuff so that we can find it. Right. right. And the moment that you're not in control of your work like that, you actually become a statutory employee. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the difference between a statutory employee and an independent contractor is the ability to set your own schedule and the ability to control your own work. And the moment that I'm not allowed to control my own work because you're micromanaging it to death, I become your employee. Do you really want to provide me with health insurance and unemployment benefits and all that good stuff? Yeah, it's it's crazy. It's you just can't, you just can't do that. You can't expect that, especially when you're hiring a subcontractor. I don't know. Right. Cause you want to make your customer happy. Yeah. I mean, for, from the independent contractor's perspective, it's all about customer service. I want to do everything that my customer wants me to do so that they keep coming back for more. Right. And this, but you know, eventually they start costing me money as opposed to making me money. Yeah. And if you're not watching that, you may not see it coming, but it it happens and it happens a lot. And the fewer people you have, the worse you can, the, the, the less tolerance you really can have for it because you can have a customer that's absolutely eating up all of your capacity to produce work. One customer can absolutely drain a two or three man shop dry like that. Right. And, and this goes suffered that for years. This kind of loops back to the, the COVID discussion right? That the change in uh, employees attitudes too, because there's also a point where this is frustrating. It's tedious, right? And yeah, you're paying me by the hour, but there is some stuff that I'm just, I'm only going to put up with so much. I don't want to work for you anymore. Right? right. I don't, I don't want to do it. If every time we send you a project, right, you've got, you come back and you're like, well, I'd like you to change these six things in the drawings and then resubmit it to me. And they're trivial things. It's like, man, just no, just send it. Just send it. Just send it. I, I can't, I can't keep doing this with you. It's frustrating, right? Because then it takes a certain pride away from it, right? Like, oh, no matter what you do, no matter how hard you try, you cannot make these people happy. And short of us giving this guy an unlimited budget to go through and check off every item in their, you know, 30 pages of completely disorganized too oh, standards sure. with memos, modifying it. And, you know, yep. and I even said to him, I said, you know what, your, your, your standards are a little bit disorganized where, you know, we can't really clearly follow what's going on. If you'd like, we could sit with you and kind of go through it and maybe, 
simplify it so that it's something we can understand and they don't want to do anything. So I, you know, I, frankly, I, I suspect that we're going to be shopping for a, a replacement customer for them shortly. And that's life, right? Like, and, and, yep. And then there'll be somebody else's problem, unfortunately. Right. Well, and I think, I think what they're used to is they find a, a one or two guy show and those guys work pretty much just for that. And all right, in that circumstance, again, it's just basically a statutory employee. Right, right. You're really ripping somebody off when you're doing that. Yeah, then they can get away with it. But again, the, the whole pride in your work thing where everything you send gets bounced back to you, even if you bounce it back politely. Right. It's. I, I mean, you work for a fucking shitty checker, right? Where... <laughs> yeah. Th- they were they weren't trying to to make sure your stuff was right they were trying to figure out how you were wrong right or how you could well be wrong. It, it was all about proving that they were smarter than me so you know every time that i gave him something he would mark up something and then hand it back to me but he didn't mark up everything if he yeah. had any other notes he he made one mark hand it back to you and you're like oh i made one mistake so you fix that one mistake and you give or even if it's not a mistake it's just i would do it this way okay so you're going to one at one item at a time redraw this in red on me where I'm going to turn this thing in for 40 different you know passes through before I've changed every little connection detail. Well, I wouldn't stagger my clip angles. I'd put a safety seat. Well, I don't like the side you put the safety seat on on the column. Let's put it on the other side. Things that don't matter. Just right. it was fine the way it was. Nothing would have been a problem. And you've made it one. And now you're going to continuously make me mess around with it just to waste my time, if for nothing else. And because at the end of the day, you're like, well, look at all those mistakes I fixed. You really messed this up. Right. Like they're trying to prove their worth. Right. Yeah. Right. And honestly, as a checker, I want the the best cleanest draw. All I want is yellow highlights. I don't want to mark it up because then it's going to come back to me for back checking. So I'm not looking to make mistakes happen so that I can point them out. I'm looking for, did you follow the contract drawings? Did you follow standard practices and building codes? Is it legible? Is it complete? Beyond that, it doesn't matter. You know, oh, I wouldn't pull my weld symbol over to this side. I drag it over here. It's fine. It's correct. Get out of my face about it, you know. But when you nitpick to that level, you drive everyone away. Yeah. And it's, you know, we've talked about this too, but, uh, and if you're working for, whether it's for a fabricator or for a subcontract detailer, your management, the people above you should be defending you, right? That's my job is like, I watch the emails and every once in a while a customer just gets rude, right? They're just, they're, you know, belittling my guys. They're asking for stuff that is not, within the scope of what we're doing or they're just saying stuff in a way that's not cool professional like right it's not professional right they're not your employees if they're fucking up i'll tell them they're fucking up right because i know that i'm also going to tell them when they're doing a great job and i'm going to give more money when they're doing a great job you're not going to do that right so if if you've got a problem with them and you need to bring it to me bring it to me but uh, no there's no faster way to get me to raise the price on your next project than to be rude or pissy to my employees. It's, it's absolutely going to happen. So, Oh yeah. All right. That's it for this episode, guys. We hope you hang out. We'll get that discord information up. We hope to see you over there. We really do want to talk to you. Uh, we'd love to just shoot the shit with other detailers and it's a nice resource every once in a while to just be able to say, Hey, does anybody have, a standard detail for a uh, you know a healthy quick bolt that they could send to me and being able to get it instantly will be great for us i'm sure it would be great for you so sign up see us over there and we'll see you here on the steel Podcast.